My full name was Veronica, but everyone around me from an early age, including my parents, preferred to call me Nika. I grew up to be a nice, cheerful girl. I did well at school. From the first time I went to university, where I wanted, I was very attracted to painting, had art in general. So from eighth grade, I purposefully prepared to enter the University of Culture Art Department. Years of study passed very quickly and cheerfully. I got a diploma and some fame in the circles of young artists and collectors. And when I was able to recognize and appraise an ancient Byzantine icon of the 15th century, which then went to auction for the estimated amount announced by me, I have already been invited to appraise their treasures by quite wealthy collectors. Fame and respect among customers and colleagues is not only a prestige, but the opportunity to receive a good reward. So after a while, I moved into a luxurious two-room apartment in the center of the city. At the same time, I started to build a two-story country house, though not a palace, but quite a cozy dwelling. In this house, I planned to place my own collection of icons, the beginning of which was laid in one of the expeditions to the Russian North in my student days. Based on the materials of this and other expeditions, by one year I had written and published a book, Antique Paintings of the Russian North, which quickly sold out and replenished personal libraries, specialists, art historians, and collectors. Young, beautiful, successful, and moderately cheeky. I was already shining at art auctions, not only at home, but also abroad. For all that I took great care of myself with great taste. I dressed, played sports to be in great physical shape. Everything was fine, but I just could not choose a candidate for a husband. There were plenty of suitors. I was not picky in this matter, but I wanted to find the only one. One with whom I wanted to live to a ripe old age and die on the same day. One day, when I was returning from a vernissage organized by a rich acquaintance, I bumped the bumper of my car into a young soldier who was walking down the street. I was really frightened and jumped out of the car and ran up to the victim and asked him if he was okay, if there were any injuries. Only my pants were a little damaged. The young man smiled guiltily and tried to put the torn pocket back in place. Are you sure you don't have any pain? I asked suddenly, realizing that the unfamiliar man was attracted to me by something. By the way, my name is Neka. Suddenly I blurted out. Well, I'm Igor. The stranger looked at me and smiled again. And let me give you a ride, I said, and I caught myself thinking that I really don't want to part with the man. Thank you, I live around here. Igor opened the door and sat down next to me. I'll shove you the way. I acted like a fool. I tried not to take my eyes off the road, unexpectedly. I asked Igor, and what do you like more tea or coffee? Tea, actually, but coffee is okay too. He looked at me and smiled and asked in response, do you want to invite me to tea? Yes, I do, he replied. Oh my God, I've come to the point where I'm dragging a man into the house myself. Thoughts like drumsticks pounded on my head. Well, if only with jam, said Igor and smiled again. From then on, things just kind of took off on their own. Date after date, and eventually we started living together. That's how we got married two years later. I have never regretted marrying Igor. We lived in an already country house. I was doing what I loved and earning good money. Igor was away at work. To be honest, I didn't even know what kind of service it was. But when my husband came home, I could see how hard he was mentally and physically. Over time, I began to realize that we live as if in parallel worlds, crossing paths only on weekends. And even then, if Igor had them. But this had no effect on my relationship with my husband. It even seemed to me that my love for him became more mature and meaningful. Periodically, Igor went on long business trips, and then I was off to work, starting to write a new book on old Russian painting 
and going on a new expedition to get the material. I spent days in the library, reading the diaries of my colleagues, and devising a new route. From time to time, I was invited to consult with a collector, so I had even less free time. One day, when Igor was on another business trip, my close friend Leica invited me to his birthday. I first even wanted to refuse, but then decided to go. From work, too, sometimes you need a break. Celebrated at the cottage at Lisa's next suitor. There were quite a few people there, all bustling about, showing signs of attention to the hostess. I, too, got a lot of attention from the male half of the guests. When we sat down at the table, there was a young, imposing man next to me. Albert is a free artist. He introduced himself by pouring a dry red wine into my glass. And what do you paint of avant-garde or cubism? I grinned at the corner of my lips. Why avant-garde? I'm a portraitist. Albert set his glass on the table, and not a bad one, I dare say. Would you like me to paint your portrait? You have a very expressive face, he said. Is it just the face? Perhaps it was then that the wine went to my head, and I began to flirt with him. The painter was embarrassed, and then began to compliment me with even more fervor. By the end of the evening, I was pretty tipsy. And when Albert offered to see his work out of the blue, I agreed. I was back in my usual milieu, hanging out among the Bohemians, and so I saw nothing criminal about going and seeing paintings by an artist I had never seen before. Albert's studio was in a one-room apartment on the fifth floor of an eight-story building. Albert's cluttered room, unfinished work, the smell of paints. All this inspired madness, and I myself did not fully understand how I found myself in bed with a free artist. I gave myself to him without foreplay, it felt good to snuggle up to him. I apologize for my revelations, but Albert knew all the weak points of a woman, and soon he had already made attempts in places where my husband did not even think. I was already in a drunken stupor, in sweet debauchery, and simply did not resist, but on the contrary, went along with him. In the morning, I woke up to the smell of fresh military coffee, afraid to spill the hot coffee. Carefully, I took the cup from Albert's hand. Well, ask the portraitist. What do you mean? I pretended I didn't understand the question and pulled the sheet over myself. I was talking about coffee. What were you thinking about? Mentally, I knew I was cynically betraying my husband, Igor, at this moment. But it didn't torture me. Remorse was good, and I didn't want to leave my new acquaintance. But so, let's go on, interrupted my thoughts by saying Albert, and took the cup from my hand and put it on the table at home. I didn't return until the next day. I wasn't expecting Igor so early, so I wasn't afraid of my husband's sudden arrival. After two years of a quiet, measured life with my husband, I was tempted to go out. No, I did not feel remorse. I just did not know how to go on immediately stop the relationship with Albert, or, conversely, to continue. The night and day spent in bed lover, I did not consider treason. What's the big deal? I'm not going to leave my husband. But I regretted a little bit. Not flushed. Just one day, Igor stopped seeing me as a woman, stopped giving me flowers, saying compliments. In my heart, I felt my husband loved me, but his love was quiet, standard sex, and without any fanaticism. I was well aware that Albert was a womanizer. His extensive experience in bed told me that. A twisted fantasy. But the next morning Albert texted me that he wanted to see me, and I couldn't resist. I spent the night in his arms again. The vicious liaison dragged on. I spent every evening with my lover, almost always staying the night at his place. Fortunately, Igor had not yet returned and could safely give himself to passion. Passion. At some point, I realized it wasn't love. I would never exchange Igor for Albert. Every time I went on a date, 
I convinced myself that this was the last time. But I couldn't help it, so I went to my lover again and again. What could you possibly have in common with this soldier? Kissing me, Albert asked. This man is not your type. You're so lofty, all about art. I was silent. Passion surrounded my head, and I didn't want to talk at all. Only pressed my lover's head tighter, giving him all my body and soul, listening to his caress. Almost a month passed. Albert had already begun to demand that I move in with him. He wanted to tell Igor himself about our relationship and at any cost to get him to divorce me. It got to the point that he was jealous of me to his own husband. And then I realized, I didn't want that to happen at all. I had taken a walk and that was it. Besides, my husband was due back any day now. When I told Albert that our meetings would no longer take place, he threw a fit and tried to hit me. He shouted at the whole staircase that I would not give him up so easily, and still sooner or later, I will be with him. Two days later, Igor arrived. He held me in his arms for a long time, as if he was afraid that I might disappear. I fussed around the house, setting the table, but Igor took me into the bedroom, and we loved each other for a long time. It seemed that my husband couldn't get enough. And at that moment, I realized that I had no one in the world more dear to me than him. The affair with the painter now seemed somehow unreal. It was in the past, and I didn't even want to think about it. Two days had passed since Igor's return, and we couldn't get enough of each other. I felt a sense of guilt toward my husband that grew stronger every day. It was literally eating away at me from the inside. I didn't know what to do, how to redeem myself in front of Igor. Several times I tried to tell him everything, to throw myself at his feet and apologize for what I had done. But I knew that my husband loved me very much, but would never forgive me. I called all kinds of names to myself. But what's done cannot be undone. We were having breakfast and discussing our plans for the weekend. When the doorbell rang insistently, Igor opened the front door and saw two policemen. A full woman and a man rubbing their hands nervously. Looking out from behind my husband, I recognized Albert among the crowd. My heart felt uneasy, frozen. What did he want? Citizen Belogorsk Igor Vladimirovich. One of the policemen moved closer to Igor. You are detained. I don't understand. What am I being accused of? My husband looked around and looked at me in a kind of helpless surprise. Of domestic violence, of beating your own wife. Were you bullying her when you found out she wanted to leave you for her lover? The woman standing behind the police officers almost screamed. She pointed with her hand to the real Albert behind her. Mr. Rubinchik has written a statement saying that you are forcibly restraining both Mrs. Belaburskaya and systematically beating her. Igor turned to me. What does all this mean, Nika? Albert said, What it means is that we love each other and want to be together. Nika wanted to get a divorce and leave for me, but you locked her in the house. Albert squeezed forward and stood close to Igor. Look, he pulled out a flash drive and a stack of pictures and held them out to my husband. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw myself in the photo in my lover's arms. My eyes went black and I began to crawl down the wall, fainting. The last thing I saw was Igor hitting Albert and he fell into the arms of the policeman who had managed to catch him. When I came to, Albert was flailing around beside me. I was lying on the couch in the living room, open with a plate and a cold towel on my forehead. The stranger sat in the chair across from me, staring at me in silence. What is the meaning of all this? What are you doing in my house? Where is my husband? Almost in a shorthand. Exhaled, I, don't worry, sweetheart, your husband won't hurt you anymore. He's been taken to the station. I hope this animal gets what's coming to him. In the meantime, we will prepare all the necessary documents for the divorce. 
The woman looked at Albert. Yes, dear Rosa Yakovlevna, she will do everything properly. I hired her as our lawyer. Albert stroked my shoulder affectionately. Fury swept over me. Get out of my house immediately. I rose from the couch, tearing the wet towel off my forehead. I love my husband, and I'm not going to leave him. Everything that's been said here about him and me is a lie. Is this your way of getting back at me? I threw a look of total hatred at Albert. He even ran for the door. I was already screaming at the top of my voice out of my house. It's okay, love. You'll come crawling back to me yourself, especially when your husband looks at all the pictures and the contents of the flash drive. It's a really fun movie out there. The studios will tear it down for a lot of money, but in the meantime, you can admire it for yourself. Come on, Rosa Yakovlevna. Nika wants to be alone. Albert put a stack of color photographs with a flash drive on the coffee table and left the house. The lawyer followed him out. I went through the pictures in silence, realizing that family life was over. No man would forgive such a thing. I didn't know what to do to run, to get Igor out, to try to explain something to him, or to wait for him at home. Suddenly I heard a noise under the cars driving by, the front door slammed. My husband walked into the room. Have you been released? Stupider question. I couldn't think of one. Silently, he made his way into the bedroom and began to gather his things, throwing them into his backpack. The essentials. He sat down across from me. There was so much unbearable pain and mental anguish in his eyes that I shuddered. I'm leaving now. Don't look for me again. I won't come back and I won't interfere with your happiness. My husband rose slowly. For a second, I thought he wanted to say something else. But Igor turned and took the wedding ring off his finger and placed it neatly on the coffee table, then threw the bag on his shoulder. And without saying a word, he left carefully shutting the door behind him. Through the window, I saw him get into a cab, and a minute later, the car disappeared around the corner. At that moment, I realized that I had lost practically everything in an instant. Now my reputation was on the line, and I had to go to war with Albert for dirt on me, so long as he has not spread it on the network. Thank you.